Well, 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 another gala banner has rolled by without a limited summon showcase in sight. So it comes to me to finally use up some of my saved up resources. Uh, unique to this gala showcase is the fact that the adventurers associated with the Time One Torment event have been added as well. So instead of a single adventurer being unraid up, it's going to be. Well, there's going to be Gala Leaf, Chubajie, uh, the Radiant Chuanzang, and then for the first time we also have a four star on focus on the showcase, which is. The four star light lance, Xiao Jing. Then obviously, we also have the five star dragon as well. How do I pronounce her name? I know in English it translates roughly to Princess Iron Fan, and I don't really want to butcher the Mandarin. So, uh, yeah, 60k Wormite, 62 single summon tickets, and seven tenfold tickets saved up. I think that's like 630? 630 rolls saved up. If not a bit more, but very, very accurate counting is not my forte. So let's get to it with the first summon of the daily discount, because obviously that's always a good way to start. Um, as explained previously, well, should I put it in the FAQs? There's always like some people who wonder why I always use single summons to build up pity right before using tenfolds. And like even when I only have Wormite instead of single fold tickets, like it's still worth it. Mainly the edge cases where you get a 5 star in a non pity rate boosted pull, and those actually end up wasting Wormite on. Well, lower rate pulls, essentially. So we'll push through a single fold tickets as quickly as we can, because they're not the most interesting part of the video, honestly. Like, I've noticed that I use... Uh, I do linger a bit on the single summons. But that also does mean that, due to the lingering, you might miss out on some of the... Like the dovetails, maybe, I don't know, like, how, how much do we rely on the tails for single chords anyway? He's kind of just want to get them out of the way, get the new four star adventure. I believe he is, what, 7% rate up? It's kind of crazy. So we're probably going to be seeing a lot of Xiao Jing in this summon video. Um, I'm actually doing the summon video before I do the the uh, no fluff analysis for the showcase because well actually I took today off so I can get started on videos sooner and also because because I'm starting video editing this early in the day it also means that well the data mining hasn't been done yet so. Well, the data mining has been done, but it doesn't really make sense for me to be... Let's see... Well, what am I waiting for? I guess stuff like skill icons and stuff aren't quite uploaded onto the wiki yet. That's typically where I grab them from. Um, and then, I don't know. Oh, well, we've been pretty broken. What is this? It's a dragon, and it is... Oh my god, Poseidon. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. Right, onwards with the single summons. Dupe Poseidon. I might have two maximum unbound copies of him at this point. Maybe even more. Oh, okay, another five star. <sighs> Goodness me. Oh, it's another dragon. And... Oh no, oh no, Sakia. I have a max unbound copy of her already, but I guess starting on a second copy isn't too bad. Actually, I'm, un I'm not too sure whether or not a non-unbound Sakia is actually any better than, say, max unbound Ifrit. 
Oh, that's a rainbow stuff. Stuff. Wand. Hey. So we have the radiant Xuanzang. This time as a five star wand. So who are we looking for? Uh, I suppose. Do, do I stop with just Gala Leaf? Considering that. Well, Jubadier is. not limited, I believe. I don't believe he's limited. So I think I'm purely after Gala Leaf, but if I'm able to pull the other five stars along the way, then yeah, happy times. And I suppose now is also the time to be spending my resources. Because obviously with a higher five star rate, you also naturally get more Eld Water out of these pulls, even if you're getting, well, especially if you're getting dupes. I mean, that's where Eld Water comes from, but yeah, I suppose with higher five star dragon rates as well. You know, gotta, gotta showcases are always a good time to pull. Unless, of course, it's flanked by a bunch of limited showcases, like the ones around Gala Alex, around Gala, um, Gala Mars. My goodness. I mean, in the end, we did manage to get all of the like, limited adventures around the Fire Emblem. What was it? What was it called? No, the, the second Fire Emblem showcase, essentially. So we ended up walking away with Tiki, Peony, and... Who was the third five star? Who was the third five star? I actually can't remember. Crom, there we go. Yeah, so I think Crom has ended up being unexpectedly good. Like he sees quite a bit of use in the like the Volk Agito fight just for bursting down the Blood Moon. And personally I've started dipping my toes into more of the expert High Dragon Trials, so at some point I might be able to start tackling endgame stuff as it comes along. I don't know, would you guys want to see me do videos on endgame content? As I become less and less casual with Dragalia Lost? Because obviously, like, all of my content has been on no fluff analyses on the showcases for the last year and a half at this point. Well, almost a year and a half. And that means that everyone that happens to subscribe to me is either after that content or my poll videos. Which, well, yeah, I suppose my poll videos get in, like, pull in more views. But I typically, well, I don't pull as much as I do no fluff analyses, that's for sure. So maybe adding more types of content to my repertoire would be maybe a good idea. Maybe you guys aren't terribly interested. You're going to keep watching other YouTubers for that. And I wouldn't blame you. I don't exactly have a name for myself in terms of doing endgame content or even being particularly knowledgeable about endgame content. Oh, I've been pity broken again. And obviously it's a five star. Don't know if I was expecting anything else. Do we have the... Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah, it's a Leviathan. So, I have... I think Leviathan and Poseidon are just... those dragons that keep coming to me. I mean, Leviathan's not bad. He is, after all, a strength dragon. But Poseidon, like, I can't really justify having more than one... one copy of Poseidon. It doesn't make sense. Like, I might use Poseidon for a healer, considering I don't believe there is a pure hit point uh, five star dragon, or even a four star dragon. I'm not sure. I don't believe that exists. Ah, uh, but I suppose in terms of healers, if I do want to heal, then I might be using Halloween Meritimus, or maybe even Gavner and Trenner if I pulled him. Or them, considering they're... Are they two entities? I'm not entirely sure. That is an... Was it Old Irish? I don't know. It's, it's, it's confusing. 
like the different the different uh, cultures that they start pulling into Dragalia last. I I get lost around them. I am not particularly knowledgeable on the different cultures that they bring in, unless it's like you know Journey to the West. Then obviously, actually, you, you guys don't know this about me, but I am East Asian in heritage. Uh, specifically, I am born in the West, but my parents are from Hong Kong, so I have the, my own little mix of cultures as well. And so Journey to the West was one of those one of those series, kind of stories that I grew up around. Like, it was kind of there. It's mostly the Stephen Chow movies that I remember. And those were quite big in Hong Kong cinema. In fact, just, just Stephen Chow movies in general. Like, that era of Hong Kong cinema. You know, like, he's a very, very good comedian, but I've always heard stories that he's also a terrible person to work with. I don't know. Those are just stories I've heard. Personally, I have not worked with Stephen Chow, so I cannot claim to be a, how to call it, primary source of information. Not even secondary. Actually, is it secondary? It's tertiary, right? No, secondary? It depends. I suppose Wikipedia is considered a tertiary source of information. Oh, yeah. What are we talking about again? Journey to the West. Why, why did we even reach that point? I don't know, Stephen Chow movies. <sighs> but the, actually interestingly enough, the Time One Torment event has shown us like a, a sort of reimagining of the Journey to the West story. There's obviously Wukong or... Wukong? Yeah. He doesn't actually willingly put the crown, or the Jingua as it's called, onto his head willingly. Most of the time anyway. So they've sort of given the story a little twist, and you know what, that's okay. The stories are old enough that they could do with, or at least people can take creative liberties and modify them anyway. It's not a huge deal, right? When we see reimaginings of Shakespeare's works a lot of the time, I think London has a lot of modern theatre associated with that. I don't know. I think some people are also quite... the purists when it comes to these kinds of stories. They're like, oh no, these stories are so old, you shouldn't be, shouldn't be changing them at all. It's highly... I don't know. People... some people believe that, you know, stories that have history behind them or could be considered deeply rooted in some culture uh, have some sort of sanctity around them, they shouldn't be modified, you have to stick to the original source as much as you can. Anyway, we've reached 7%, so actually we can use some tenfolds. Sanctity of old stories. I don't know. I don't think I believe that around any stories that I'm aware of. Well, I suppose it depends on, like, your culture, your upbringing, you know, whether or not that story forms something you consider to be part of yourself. And that's a lot of lances. We're gonna see a lot of Xiao Wu Jing, aren't we? The dragons come out to play. Yep. Yeah. Four-star character on a rate up on a gala showcase. This is the first time no, that's ever happened, as far as I'm sure. As far as I'm aware. Oh, that's three five stars. The dragon, a sword, and a katana. Now the sword we're hoping is gala leaf. Ah, we don't call it katana. We call it blade, don't we? Oh, that is... Kamui? Kagatsuchi. Ah, goodness. Not really a dragon that I could justify, like, using sunstones on bind, but that is Gala Lee. 
Nice. So he has joined the fold. I heard glitches in the audio. Is it possible that we don't see a showcase ball? Ooh, Victor! Very nice. Adding to my, well, the holes in my collection, really. Climan, who recently received a spiral, and we haven't done very many pulls, have we? So this is 15 minutes into the video. We have Garlaleaf, who we're mainly after. But, you know, there's the chances for Gala Alex, chances for Gala Mars, who I skipped summoning for, but I deeply regret due to how powerful he was. And obviously I skipped Gala Alex as well. And she's also insanely powerful and I regret not pulling for her. You know, such is life when everything's surrounded by limited showcases. You're like, ah, how could I possibly summon for all of these? So we're going to do, do the unwise thing and attempt to just use just a bit more of our resources, because I still have 60k where I in the bank. That is... Mm, it's a lot to be sitting on, I think. Ah, but I'll, would I regret it? There is... Well, there is the two-year anniversary looming. Right after the one-and-a-half-year anniversary, you got to consider the two-year anniversary. Mm, and I believe, I don't know, like, rumours, like, speculation on the subreddit sort of point towards possibly a Gala Laxi down the line due to how she was teased in the reveal video for Gala Leaf, and no Gala Leaf being released in this, in this Gala showcase, then we also have whispers of Zethia on the horizon as well. I suppose that's a story spoilers if you guys haven't, if you guys haven't cleared the story up to the latest chapter, because obviously there's going to be a lot more, there's going to be more players joining all the time. New players all the time, and I don't know if the new players go straight to watching my pull videos. If you're a newer player and I've accidentally spoiled the story for you, uh, my, my deepest condolences. But I suppose that is a risk that comes with, well, watching any sort of content online, really. Hmm, and I guess pushing the later chapters actually does get quite difficult. There's a lot of might gating, like just through, not even by the chapters themselves, but by the fact that they do get a bit harder as you push further on. And goodness me, is that Xiaowu Jing? Oof, why, why'd the screen flash like that? Yeah. Anyway, we've definitely gone over 10 single folds. Or oh, 10 single summons. And I want to check the rates. So appearance rates now are seven more summons between before increased five stars. So we will go for those seven single summons and then hopefully get some use out of our 10 folds. That's one. I hate how equally sized the diamantium button is because it's also on the right side i'm right-handed it feels more instinctual to just tap on the right hand button goodness me shall Jing, please no <laughs> just before i started this uh or i did this summon started recording the summon video i hopped on the reddit and you know the top post there is like you know people getting sick of Xiaowu Jing already. And, you know, I kind of understand it already. Oh, funky audio. But yeah, I do understand it now. I am part of the in-crowd. I understand the suffering. Was that six or was it seven summons? I can't count nowadays. Norwin. Uh, I feel like Norwin was kind of dead on arrival. Or at least... I don't know, shadow bows in general just weren't, weren't that great. Well, I mean, the only other shadow bow was Nefaria, but I think when Norwin was released, Nefaria's spiral wasn't a thing yet. And 
I don't know, just the concept of relying on blind at all was just not that great. Just, I don't know, any status afflictions that could potentially be abused to like cheese boss mechanics just weren't that supported when it came to any character, I guess. Hence Nefaria's Blindness Punisher was not too great. That is a staff. Are we missing any five-star healers? I'm not sure if that's the case. Are we going to get spooked by Grace now? Yep. <laughs> uh, well, I dream summoned for her and still couldn't auto any, any content. So, hmm. I believe I do need to invest a bit more in my teams before I can really use Grace for any sort of auto content. Hmm, now who would I rather have summoned for? I mean, I believe my second choice would have been Victor, but we pulled him already, like, in this video. So, who's to say that any of my choices would have been correct? I don't know. Maybe I should have picked 5-star dragon instead. You can't really go wrong with putting 5-star dragons, because you often want more than one copy of dragons. Now, who are we even hoping for? Potentially Gala Alex, Gala Mars, but honestly, the, the odds surrounding them are not good have an equal chance of pulling them, or at least Scarlet Alex as any other 5-star adventure in the pool at the moment, if you ignore the rate-up ones, obviously. And Scarlet Mars, I believe the rate for 5-star dragons is slightly higher than than any other, like, unit on the showcase, but... Oh. What am I, what am I thinking? I don't know. It seems like Poseidon and Leviathan are just going to be chasing me to the ends of the earth. And it's, and it's always different for everyone, huh? Everyone always has different dragons and adventurers that won't leave them alone. As for me, yeah, it's Leviathan, Poseidon. Always getting terribly busy. Oh, there's the five star. Five star sword, deep gala leaf. This reminds me of that time where I tried extra summons and just got extra gala cleos. I do this to myself. I definitely do this to myself. Anyway. Let's use a bit more of our resources, because we still have those single summon tickets sitting about. So, did I say single summons? I mean tenfolds. <sighs> now, who are we missing that's right up? There's Jupat here, and... Princess Iron Fan? Uh, I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly. My Mandarin is not the best, despite my parents being from Hong Kong. Because growing up in the West, then obviously you can tell that English is in fact... Actually, is English my first language? I'm not sure, but it's the one that I'd consider myself to be the most fluent in. Such is life. When well, you are Asian in descent, but you grow up in the West. You don't speak a language that matches your appearance, and if you do, it's typically not as fluent as your English. Oh, that's another five star. Five star bow. Ooh, Nefaria. Well, she is just Eldwater, but hey. 
lots of appreciation for... What is her epithet? Queen of the Sands? I'm actually not sure. Might be related to the fact that she's undead? Maybe? I'm not sure. <laughs> hmm. What am I hoping for? I suppose I'm also missing Gala Luca, but Gala Luca didn't really make any waves. But that might also be because he's a light element adventurer. And obviously light and water not having access to Chimera Tech or Agito weapons puts them at a naturally lower power level compared to other adventurers. And honestly, that also caused quite a bit of a you know, some some Perception issues when Celiara's Mana Spiral was released, because people were like, oh no, Celiara's Mana Spiral isn't as good as, you know, um, who is it? Sufang in the Wind element and Botan in Shadow. And, you know, people were failing to recognize the fact that actually the relative power before and after Spiral, I believe, was fairly similar for all of the adventurers, or at least the raid welfare adventurers that got mana spirals. And it's only because the water element itself is actually quite weak in terms of not having access to, you know, Agato weapons. Oh, another Sha Wu Jing. We're going to be seeing a lot of him, huh? Yep, definitely seeing a lot of him. No, what do I want to pull until? I want to pull until I have like maybe 40k worth my remaining. This is an incredibly slow way of doing it, but it is somewhat more efficient. We'll just go for the single boost and pity right before using ten folds, because more often than not we're getting pity broken while trying to build up to the second stage. So we've got the single dove. That's like what? One or two four stars? Three four stars. How many of them are lances? Two. And a dagger. Shall we do? Uh. Oh. It's a gold. We have him already though. And. Awesome. Well, let's use the other tenfold summon voucher. That's three dubs. Does that bode any better? Do we have a five star? <laughs> According to the circle, we don't. More lances. And four star dragons as well. I suppose I don't really have much use for four star dragons at this point. Haven't been playing mostly almost every day for the last year and a half. In fact, I was playing since like, what, middle of October 2018? Yeah, that's over a year and a half. Like, four-star dragons just become Eldwater for me. Not to say that Eldwater is bad, like, more Eldwater is always good, because, you know, especially with the release of the skill sharing, that's a sword. <laughs> the skill sharing means that, like, if you do want to share an adventurous skills, oh, that's a staff. If you do want to share an adventurous skills, they have to be at 50 mana circles. Gala Ranzel is a dead character in the meta. Like, it's just. There is. <sighs> He's just not good, guys. He'd have to get like a major power boost from his mana spiral, if he gets one, that is, to be considered, you know, competitive amongst wind swords. And Valentine's Hildegard. That one adventurer that evaded me for so long, and now she just sits in my roster, unused. Because honestly, the energy mechanic, how little it does, it's just not worth it, I think. Unless, like, I don't know, if you use it for some 
cheese with crumb, maybe? Goodness. Crumb cheese? That sounds like, that sounds really weird to say. I don't know, could a... Uh, but lots of people are clearing Master Vault without healers at all, even... Like, if everyone just picks up a healing skill on their... As one of their skill shares, then, you know, it's... You know, you can, you can, you can do stuff without a healer. Well, I mean, given that, like, what is it? It's mainly Cleo's skill that people are using, but... Hmm. I mean, that's enough. That's enough healing. Considering a lot of the damage is avoidable. And otherwise, he might be playing Marth. And obviously Marth has his regen on his... I believe it's what? Flickering Flames? The regen skill. Oh, that's a 5 star. Who are we hoping for? Come on, got Alex. Galamaz. 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 That's not Galamaz. <sighs> Don't get me, Kazuchi. I believe that is my second unbound copy of Takami Kazuchi at this point. That is second max unbound copy. And he's just... I mean, I suppose he's better than Lindworm, but... Overdrive Punisher just isn't that great. And even then... I don't know, it's strange. Like, you know, Lathotep is the... I believe he's been reworked at least once, maybe twice even. I don't remember the specifics. But I don't believe they've reworked any other dragons ever. Like, hmm. What was his original real? Like, original form was like, uh, you got a shield if your hit points dropped below a certain amount or something, but then you lost the strength buff. Or you had to be healed up and like you only retained the strength buff from the shield if you kept it. I don't know. Oh, hey, that's a five star. Come on, Galamaz. Oh, okay. She has... Hmm, I wonder who her voice actress is. But okay. Okay, so she is, I believe, strength and skill haste? Or is she hit points and skill haste? She might be hit points and skill haste. Oh, goodness. Uh, what am I hoping for here? Hmm. Well, more Shao Jing. Come on. <sighs> Shao Jing. Way too many of him. I don't even know what he does as a character, because obviously they don't release his news as, or at least his skills and such as part of the news posts on the showcase reveals. And they don't even put him in the, uh, like, the art or the banner reveal. Goodness me. What am I still hoping for? Still hoping for more Gala adventures and the one dragon, I suppose. Ah, but pulling for them is just going to be incredibly unlikely, right? So who else am I hoping for? There's Jubachi. Would I stop if I get him? I might do, considering everything else that I'm hoping to get would be... off focus. So this is summon number 9 in the pity rate build-up. And... come on, last one. Let's get the pity rate up, and then we can use the last ten fold summon voucher. Okay, I believe that is that is it. Ten more summons before increased five star rates. So let's use this ten fold summon voucher and see where it leaves us. Three dopes. and that's a five star circle. Oh, first one's a five star, and it is a sword! Okay, so I believe we are left without Chupachie. And that is, I believe, Gala Leaf 
Number three? <sighs> what do we call this? Hubris? The belief that I could in fact pull anything that was off focus. That I wanted. I mean, I suppose I got Victor, but... <sighs> no excess sent to goodie box. I... Do I want to expand my dragon storage? Not particularly. Uh, we want to use a bit more Wormite. And let's push through these rather quickly. Hmm. At this point, I'm not sure why I'm still spending. I think it just feels good to use summons, right? <laughs> it also feels good potentially to watch other people pull on showcases. And I suppose that is... is well, why do you guys watch summon videos? Like, I don't personally watch them, but I suppose... Is Jigalia lost to game that I'd consider one of my main games? I'm not sure. I mean, I'd certainly play it every day. Do I enjoy the game? I'd hope I do. Because otherwise, why do I play it, right? Yeah, I suppose I do enjoy the game. Like, the whole slow process, slow progress, slowly pushing up towards end game content does kind of feel good. And otherwise, why else do people play games, right? It's the feeling of rewards, satisfaction, Dopamine, I guess. That is the main reason people play games, right? For enjoyment. There's nobody who plays games just to torture themselves, right? Though I suppose we are a bit more similar to Dark Souls in that regard, now that we have dodge rolling. Not that I'm saying that people that play Dark Souls enjoy torture, but... You know, I, I, maybe the rates of people that enjoy... Inflicting pain upon themselves is a bit higher than the Dark Souls player base. Anyway, Tenfold Summon, let's get that guaranteed Xiao Jing from the Tenfold. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll get a 5 star. Maybe it'll be something that we don't already have. Wouldn't that be grand? Four star Dragon, a 5 star Sword again. And a four-star lance. Was that the guaranteed Xiao Jing? Very well. Could be. Gala Leaf number four. Is it number four? I don't know. I can't count, but that's another Xiao Jing. Goodness me. <sighs> Goodness me. Goodness, goodness me. Let's keep pushing through the single summons. Get the rate up. And I suppose if people are still watching at this point and wondering, why are you using single summons? Well, the reasoning behind that is if you do a tenfold without having built up your pity rate, and let's say, for example, your fifth summon in the tenfold, is a 5 star. The remaining 5 summons in that tenfold will also be done at the standard 6% of 5 star rate, but they don't contribute towards building up your pity rate. So the end result, after doing 10 summons and having the 5th being a 5 star, if you were to do 10 summons with either 10 folds and single folds, the difference between them would be, well, 5 summons put towards building up the pity rate. And obviously, if I pulled, what, was, was this summon number 5? Chibadier? That is not Chibadier, that is another... <laughs> that is an off-rate Gala Adventurer that... <sighs> Goodness. Okay, so imagining that I've done these summons with a tenfold instead, then these following five summons would not be contribute no well, would not be contributing towards building up my pity rate. And that is the gist of it, mostly. 
by building up your pitch rate with single folds before using turn folds, then you, as a result, get a higher number of pulls with a higher rate, or at least a higher 5 star rate. Now obviously this is the rate of getting any 5 star at all. If you're going for like on focus units, or just getting Summit Cleo for example, then it changes a bit, right? Oh, goodness. I'm not getting what I want in this one. Ugh. So at this point, that was what? Two five stars in... Oh, maybe like 11 or 12 summons, right? Would that have... I don't know. There is obviously that Reddit post that I linked in the last summon video. I might pull out that link and put it in the FAQs or the description. You guys can look at the maps if you are mathematically inclined. As for myself, am I mathematically inclined? I suppose I hope I am, considering that, you know, I studied it as a teenager. Did I do any maths in university? I think the most I did was like, the closest thing to maths would be some statistics. So, um, yeah, I suppose I did data science as part of my studies in university, and that is quite mathematically heavy. Anyway, I believe this is summon number 10 in the quest to build up our pity rate, and obviously, we get another 5 star to stop us from building it up. Come on, Galamaz. Ugh. Nimis. Uh, I mean, I suppose that is a new dragon, but it puts us back to trying to build up our pity rate again. So let's push on a bit further. Uh, that Nemesis could have been Golemars. They had equal odds of appearing, but obviously equal odds does not mean interchangeable. Valentine's Orion. Does this mean that I'm supposed to get Valentine's Hildegard next? Maybe not. Maybe not. I don't think I'll be lucky enough to make any calls like that for the rest of my YouTube career. Especially considering that that was also a call on an off-rate character. Have any of you ever encountered something like that? Thinking... Hmm... What am I pulling to again? Okay, I believe the next one is summon number 10, right? Four, seven, nine, thirty. In where might... So that's just under 400 summons left. I suppose we might stop here, or at least when we get pity broken, because this video is nearing 45 minutes in length. You don't have any five stars. And is that our guaranteed? Shaojing. <laughs> Valentine's Azalith was fairly abused during the burn meta for Mercurial Gauntlet, but with the release of Gala Alex, most people just blast through Mercurial Gauntlet with shadow based teams. I suppose that is an argument for trying, or at least wanting the elements to be roughly on par with each other in terms of power level, because if you don't 
and you let Shadow overtake everything else like it has, then people just clear content of element. And I skipped the circle for the first time in a long while. My apologies. But I believe we're going to get our guaranteed Shadow Jing at the end, right? Yep. Ah, goodness. Okay. So these are going to be the final few summons. Hopefully we get something worthwhile when we're pity broken. Goodness me. Well, there's the rainbow circle. And the last one's a five star. That is probably a Shao Jing. That one too. And an X. Do we in fact manage... Well, did we manage to get everything that was right up on the showcase? Do we have Jubajia? Oh, Jubajia, right? Not Bai? And... Or is it another Gala Elizan? Or I'd be fairly upset if that was the case. Shao Jing and... Summer Julieta. Ah, oh, dear. Deary me. Well, we're gonna call it at that. I... Hmm. No, I suppose I wasn't too... I wasn't really chasing Jubachia that much. Considering I don't think he's limited. Showcase info... Uh, what did I say? The newly added adventurers will also appear in the next summon showcase. But obviously if you do want the adventurers, then now is a good time to pull for them, because... Actually, no. Wait, hold on. Appearance rates... Appearance rates, they are still half a percent, like, standard. Is that standard? Maybe it is, yeah. So just the rate of five stars is higher, so you get more Elder Water out of the same number of summons. But obviously... Yeah, I suppose the odds for the individual adventurers on rate up haven't changed. Well, anyway, we'll leave it at that. Hope you guys are having a fun and safe time with Dragalia Lost. Thank you guys very much for watching until the end. Stay safe, and I wish you luck in your upcoming polls.